The Intermediate Value Theorem. Uh, suppose you're skiing down a mountain. Uh, let's actually do that. So, suppose you're skiing down a mountain, uh, and it's from 3,000 feet in elevation to 1,000 feet in elevation, and you do it in 40 minutes. So your altitude is continuously decreasing. So you reach every single value between 3,000 feet in elevation and 1,000 feet in elevation at some time during your descent. This is the premise of the Intermediate Value Theorem. Okay, so we've got our skier and they start at 3,000 feet and they descend to 1,000 feet from time 0 to 40 minutes. the intermediate value theorem tells us that they have to pass through every value on their way down between 3000 and 1000 at least once. Here it is formally. Okay, the intermediate value theorem or IVT states that if our function is continuous as our skier was on a closed interval from A to B, in this case from 0 to 40, and the function evaluated at A, in this case where we start, which is 3000, does not equal where we end the function evaluated at B, in this case 1000, for each m value between f of a and f of b, there exists at least one c value on A to B such that, so somewhere in here there has to be a C value such that F of C is your M value. In our skiing example this means that the IVT guarantees that you're going to reach an elevation of, say, 2,204 meters, uh, feet, sorry, at some time on your interval of 0 to 40, guaranteed. We can use the IVT to do some other kinds of questions. For example, we can use it to prove that cosine theta is equal to 0 0.4812. at least once, so uh, prove that this has at least one solution. You should know that it has a lot of solutions. So here's how you could go about doing that. Since the cosine function is always between negative 1 and 1, we'll just uh, pick an interval containing our solution, 0.4812. Um, so we know, for instance, that cos theta is 0 when theta is equal to pi over 2. And we know that cos theta is 1 when theta is equal to 2 pi from the cosine graph. So it's 0 here, and it's 2 pi here. So somewhere on that interval, it's got to be 0.48. We apply the intermediate value theorem since cosine theta is continuous. That's the first part of the IVT that we must show. And it's continuous on the interval. It's always continuous, but specifically on our interval, which is 
pi over 2 to 2 pi, and cos pi over 2 does not equal cos 2 pi. This one's 0, and this one's 1, just in case you forgot. Therefore, the IVT shows that there exists at least one value. Now, usually it's called C. And in this case, we want our C value to be 0 0.4812 uh, on the interval from pi over 2 to 2 pi, such that f of that C value is equal to 0 0.4812. We can use the uh, intermediate value theorem to locate zeros as well. So if you've got a continuous function from A to B and one of your values is the other sign to or if this is uh, the other way around, so if one value is negative and one value is positive, the IVT guarantees you that somewhere in between those two endpoints of your interval that you have a value of zero. So we can state that. We can use the IVT to locate zeros because if uh, your functions are continuous, on a b and if f of a and f evaluated at b have opposite signs then some point c on the interval a b has to equal zero then c on a, B has F of C equal to zero, which is how you find a zero, or how you prove that there's a zero. And actually, we can extend this even further. We can actually estimate or find the zeros using uh, a little trick of the IVT. So let's take a look at that. Find the zero of, and I'll make up a little bit of a tough question here, 3 sine x minus 1, and I'll give you the interval that it's on, on 0, 2. So the idea behind this is that you've got some function, and as long as f of 0 and uh, f of 2 have opposite signs, somewhere in between there, there has to be a 0. So one's going to be a uh, y value above 0, one's going to be a y value below 0, so it's got to cross the x-axis at some point between uh, 0 and 2. And then what you can do uh, once you know that, so uh, grabbing a calculator, f of 0 is negative 1, and f of 2 is about 1.73. Um, what I can do now is use a little trick called the bisection method, and I can say, okay, well, somewhere in between here is a point f of 1, evaluate this at 1, get 1 1.5, and then think about the IVT extension. So somewhere between these two points, there has to be a 0. And then do my trick again. So now do f of 0 0.5, and I can get a value of 0 0.438 and some more decimal places. Now I know that on the interval between uh, 0 and 0 0.5, I've got my 0. So now I try, well, what happens if I evaluate it at 0.25, grab my calculator, and now I get a negative value. It's about negative 2.58. Um, so now I know that somewhere between neg uh, 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 is my 0 because of the sign change. So I pick another value somewhere in between there, like 375, 
and I just keep finding the midpoint of these intervals and testing it. And so this gives me 0 0.0988 and some more decimal places, which is positive. So now that I have that, I need a negative one and the next positive one. And I'm zooming in more and more and more on my zero. If I take it another step, I can use 0 0.3125 in my calculator, and I now get negative 0.08-ish. Uh, so I know that it is on the interval 0 0.3125, 0 0.375. And I already know the first decimal place is 0 0.3. Uh, eventually, we will find the zero. And this process, again, is called the bisection method.